Hi everyone, this is Mo Volans back for AudioTouch.com on this wintry doomsday eve here in the UK. And today we're going to be looking at some premium content on mastering workflow technique. Now, what do I mean by mastering workflow and what is it? Well, it's essentially uh, separating, clearly separating the mix process from the mastering process and uh, perhaps opening uh, the mastering project in a completely different session and even using different applications. Some of you will be mastering in line straight inside your DAW, straight inside the project. Now, this is fine and it gets the job done, but I personally wouldn't go around it that way. I think it's great to step back and have a different project for your mastering, not only because it, light, it lightens the load on your computer, on your CPU, and it makes the whole thing a lot less confused, but you also step back and you really see it as a different process and perhaps actually take a physical break as well. Um, but, you know, I think you get more controlled results and you get a clear overview of what's happening. And I find it's a much better way to work. And I'll sort of show you why as we, we go through it. Um, right now we're in Logic Pro. Uh, we're using Reason in Rewire mode. I'll just bring Reason in here uh, using a load of different, uh, well, lots of different <laughs> devices in the background. Um, but it doesn't really matter which DAW you use, which app you use. Um, this is more about the actual workflow technique as it is uh, the, the software technique, if you like. Um, so we're using the same project as we did in some premium content for arrangement. And this is just so you can see the project evolve and hopefully you get a bit of continuity if you watch that last premium um, tutorial. And we've got our arrangement finished. It's mixed. Um, and you can see here on the master output, we've got a limiter. Um, and this is just to give me an idea throughout the project of what it's going to sound like. Um, it's nice to have that there and maybe even a bus compressor just to give you, you switch them on and off just to give you an idea of what it's going to sound like mastered, give you a vague idea at least. Um, and the, you know, this is currently running. So if I play the project back, you can see we've got some gain reduction here and we're sort of peaking at zero. Um, but obviously we're going to switch that off because we don't really want, um, you know, any processing on our master output. Uh, there's a utility up here for gain or whatever, but ultimately you're uh, running a dry master out and um, that's what we've got here. And we've got plenty of headroom and this is all important. You know, you want to be running at Unity gain with two, three, four dB of headroom. Um, and you can see that there's loads and loads of headroom on, on the rest of the channels almost too much but you know in a digital system there's no noise bed so you don't want to worry about low levels i guess you can't clip a digital system you know they've, a lot of them have got sa soft saturation built into them but i don't like to be having lots of hot levels everywhere lots of clipping all over your mix because that will accumulate and you're gonna get some strange artifacts somewhere along the line so I think it's nice to have four or five dB of headroom on your master out there um, and you know everything looks healthy, your mix is a good relative level at this point, that's what you're concentrating on. If you're not mastering in this project, just make sure that everything is sitting right with each other. Don't try and make it super loud, don't try and over compress everything um, unless that's artistically what you're after. We can achieve that loudness and that you know punch and uh, uniform you know uniform sound in the master so at this point just keep things nice and transparent and loads of headroom make sure your dynamics are breathing and uh, and that's really all it is you really just want to check through at this point <laughs> 